hey y'all welcome back to my channel it's rika the poet it's rika rika the relator your relative relative and the urban translator today is the fashion show Ooh, but i gotta do a rewind of what happened yesterday i just got word that one of the ogs is walking tomorrow how long mark didn't okay y'all so for those who do not know philander has a modeling troupe called stump and stump been killing like forever they just known to kill baby when they get on their runway baby and so we just talking about the fashion show that's tomorrow and this man a guy tells me that he walking tomorrow because we <laughs> we naming other models who we know just gonna kill it every single time and he was like yeah matter of fact i'm walking tomorrow too i was like what <laughs> yo be there be square seven o'clock tomorrow <laughs> I cannot believe you. So y'all, long story short, I got off work and I prepared myself for the probate. Here's the probate. I'ma get better, y'all. I promise. I hope y'all enjoy.
By the time y'all watch this, part one has been posted. And I'm learning to mute as much music as possible because the last year, 
YouTube actually deleted the probate, the backlot parties, and some more stuff. So I'm using a lot of the fake music. I know y'all, but I gotta do what I gotta do if y'all wanna see the footage. Today is the fashion show. I'm excited. See, I'm trying to be a little festive and go with the homecoming themes or whatever, but I hope y'all having a great day. Happy homecoming. Woo, go back to give an update on Mario the dog that Riz Life had. They actually found his owner. So I had fun with my little poo, -poo but he had to go home. I'm about to insert a clip of the alumni panel with some current freshmen. And it was real cool. They was just talking about mentorship and guidance and stuff while being a Philanderian. 20 years, able to retire four and a half at a very young age. Um, I would not be a real estate developer right now without Mary. And I don't, I didn't see myself as a social butterfly. I always go up to, I'll go up to someone that I wanted to mimic myself by and I would introduce myself. And I noticed a lot of my peers, they wouldn't do that. They would wait on people to kind of come to them. So I was able to foster a lot of good relationships by just showing up, being at the right place at the right and you're committed. They'll walk with you as long as you need them to walk with you to reach your goals. So my advice to each of you, if you do not have a mentor, you need to seek you a mentor today, a professional mentor, a personal uh, mentor, someone that you can trust because we all um, need someone that we can just get to have an outlet to. And you also want that person- It's a safe space for me to have a thought partner, right? So that I can make the right decision, right? Because one thing about our generation, right? I'm, I'm only 33, is we tend, and, and, and everybody younger, we tend to think we just know it all, right? We tend to want to do things really, really fast, right? And we have some advantages, right? We have access to the internet and, um, you know, we're, we're, we're a little more, you know, ambitious than maybe the people that that, has, that, that come before us, but we need to rely on the experience of others, right? Um, the second thing is you have to, you need a network, right? And sometimes having a professional or personal mentor allows you to make calls to get in rooms, right, that you couldn't have gotten in without having that connection, right? Um, the job in the chamber, the job at the employees big social, the job at the other room, right? Um, all jobs, people were kind of like, how is he landing these positions like so fast that we just heard of him seven, eight years ago, right? It was because I knew if I could get into the room, right? Um, I knew I could wow people, right? I knew I could impress people. But getting into the room was like 70% of the battle, right? But it wasn't hard for me because I had those relationships where I would call them and say, hey, look, you know I'm done with it, right? You know I'm paying you, right? Like, get me in the room, right? And then be there for me, right? On my journey to make sure that I don't make, I'm not making mistakes, looking for me a different thought perspective. Um, but finding mentors isn't the easiest thing in the world to do, right? Because most of the people you look up to, um, or I look up to, are, are, are busy, right? And so you have to be real strategic about how these mentor relationships work, right? Sometimes it's a mentor and a friend for a lifetime. Sometimes it's a respond to my email once a quarter, right? Sometimes it's can I send you a text twice a year, right? Um, sometimes it's can we go to dinner, um, you know, twice a year. So just be flexible with people, um, but you will find the mentor that you really care about. But it has to be a part um, of your arsenal. Um, one way, and I'm all about going faster, right? I'm not. I'm not going to see her in front. Like, I don't want to go fast as possible. But one way you get there is having those mentors who you can learn from their experiences. Mentor. Mentors are extremely important. Um, I'm, I can honestly say I probably would not be sitting here without several different mentors, and they all don't look like me. They are from a variety of races um, and religions and different walks of life. Um, First off, I started to choose mentors where they were already in the place that I wanted to become or where I wanted to be. Um, so when I got into graduate, well, I started here at Philanthropy Smith College when I came with Meyer L. Titus. He was the president at the time. And he um, used to allow us to come over to his home and he would uh, barbecue in the backyard. He would have different conversations with us about life and about education about what we needed to do. So as life progressed. Uh, a favorite PSC story. I did mention uh, 
sorority and fraternity. I did mention Ruth James, Dr. James uh, class, which I can have some stories there because we had a ball, but we did learn and we did pass. So can you share your favorite fun PSC story to our freshmen this morning? Dr. McAllister. Keep it clean. Keep it clean. Yeah, keep it clean. Sure, sure. So I, I would have to say probably um, my funniest story about Phenomenon College is when I was a freshman. I came in. I'm from St. Louis originally. I'm from Kenlock. If anybody from St. Louis, so I was. Um, of course, you know it's inner city. Um, you know it's uh, low low income and. Uh, I thought I was mad. I, I kept myself clean. I had my, my shirt always matching my shoes. And I thought I was the man when I first came to college. And I saw this young lady walking across campus one day. She was a, I think she might be a senior. And I said, I, I got in Mac mode. I pulled my pants up, you know, I'm, I'm ready to ready to wrap it. She turned around and said, Little boy, you don't get yourself some hours before you come talk to me. <laughs> and at that point, I knew I had to be serious about college because girls in college didn't like individuals who were trying to be too street. They wanted an individual who was um, focused on their books. And that night she made the whole breezeway laugh, and I was like, oh my God. <laughs> so that's my funny story. Mr. Long. Nah, I don't, I don't really have any stories. Um, I'm going to be authentic. Um, like I said, I was an entire adult when I came here. Um, so there was no games, no fun. I was here to get something done. Uh, however, I, I do remember um, the day I got the conferred transcript in the mail. That I was waiting on a raise and I needed that. I needed that document, right? So whenever I got that, like, that's when it was fun, right? That's what made it all work. I could walk in and say, hey, I've done what you asked me to do. Like, pay me, promote me. And I have my resume and I was my shopping, right? Because um, now I'm a professional, like with the degree that the world has asked me to give or to prove myself. So, um, no fun stories. It was, it was, it was all business when I came. So, yeah. Major Browning, and just before you get started, I want to remind our all the students we will open the mic for questions. So if you can go ahead and get those prepared after Major Browning uh, shares with us her fun story, funniest in PSE. Yes, there for, for our panelists. 
this. Is there a word, a set of words that you can share with our students at this time that could inspire them as freshmen? They're just getting started, they have classes, they meet new people, several are in a new location physically. They're in Arkansas, they're in Little Rock and may have never visited prior. Is there some inspirational words each of you can share with our students at this time? Major Brandon. Okay. So I wanna talk about quickly three things, um, habits, fears, and your comfort zone. Um, so, and, and these things for me, they can condition you, you can work through your, your, your habits, right? Sometimes we have habits that we need to break um, or um, refine a little bit when we're going into new environments. Um, this is your fresh, uh, freshman year. You need to understand some of the things that you did in high school, you can no longer do in this environment um, as far as, you know, your fears, you know, me personally, if when I was in college, there were times when I did just enough, and that's just full transparency because I'm having fun, I'm going to parties, I'm you know looking at all the AKAs on the yard, trying to become an AKA. I'm doing just enough for the military um, to pay for my school. So I'm going to say definitely be consistent. Be consistent every day. As I said before, show up every day. Because where you are right now, you're trying to get to a five or, or 10 year goal. You don't have time to play around. So make sure that you uh, eliminate a lot of distractions. And when I speak of comfort zones, um, be okay with coming out of your comfort zone. You've made the leap to come to college. You're paying for it. Whether you know when you have scholarships, whether your your parents are paying for, whether you're getting some form of uh, student loan or assistance, make sure that you are being your very best. And for me, when you can work on those habits, and when you can you know work on some of the fears that you may have, and when you work outside of your comfort zone, you're truly conditioning yourself to be your best. Because um, if I could do it all over again, I definitely would have come to Philander. That that wouldn't change, right? And I probably would have went on to practice law, but it was, you know, five years after I finished school where I had the confidence and maturity to, to believe that I could make it through law school. But if you're here now, you can make that goal because you can do it right now. You, you don't have to wait. So I just want to leave with you all, do the things that um, condition you to be your very best. You know, make you a schedule out. Study, aim for all A's. There is nothing wrong with it. Aim for being, you, you know, uh, summa cum laude. All of that. So that's what I want to leave you with. Um, making sure that you're making the right decisions and you're doing the absolute best things to condition you to be your best every day. Thank you, Ms. Brown. Before we go, uh, Dr. McAllister, Mr. Long, there's a question. Uh, my name is Dry Dell. I'm a criminal justice major and I'm from the state of Arkansas. And I wanted to ask all of you guys, how did you handle time management? You from Sugar Town? Yes. Oh. <laughs> time management. Time management. Oh, man. Time management is extremely important. Um, as Crystal said, when I was here, I was, I was in, a, I am in, a, I am in a fraternity. So there was a lot of times that I had to, especially after I graduated and was in graduate school, that I had to uh, kind of step away and prioritize what was important. Um, when it comes to graduate school, you have to make sure that you're dedicating enough time to be successful in your endeavor. So graduate school is definitely an endeavor. It's not about who's the smartest in graduate school. It's about who can last the longest who can um, set aside time and, and do the required work, the required assignments, and get them in, and um, be able to um, take uh, constructive excuse me, criticism. 
So, um, time management is extremely important in graduate school. It's also extremely Oh, because it's the big new on campus. Hold up. Whole lot of, whole lot of. Kiara said it's homecoming. It is homecoming. <laughs> it's the puff for me. Turn around, let me see the puff. No, oh it's I want to see the puff. No. Y'all, I work with some high boys because between this fit and come here, Mark. Let me see. Between, <laughs> baby, between this haircut. Hold on. Okay. 